Service accounts represent non-human users. They are special kinds of accounts intended for scenarios where an application or a workload needs to access resources or perform actions such as making authorized API calls without end user involvement. Let's get started with when to use service accounts. Use service accounts for unattended scenarios. When an unattended application, such as a batch job or a resource monitoring agent, needs to access a resource, it must act on its own and not on behalf of end users. Create a service account for the application and grant it access to just the resources the application needs. Doing so restricts the scope of what the application can access while attributing the resource access to the application itself. Service accounts are also useful for applications in which a user authenticates with a custom authentication scheme and then indirectly accesses Google Cloud resources. The application should confirm that the user is authenticated and authorized, then use a service account to authenticate to a Google Cloud resource. Do not use service accounts to access user data without the user's consent. An application might require access to sensitive or personal user data. Use the OAuth consent flow to request the end user's consent and then let the application act under the end user's identity. This ensures that end users can review which resources they're about to grant the application access to and can explicitly express or deny their consent. Users can revoke their consent at any time. For more information on the OAuth consent flow, check out this documentation. Service accounts support different types of authentication methods. Let's now look at the best practices to choose the right authentication method when using a service account based on your use case. For applications running on Google Cloud, use attached service accounts when possible. This enables the application to obtain tokens to access Google Cloud APIs and resources. For applications using GKE, use workload identity to attach service accounts to Kubernetes pods. This creates a mapping between the service account and their corresponding Kubernetes service accounts. For more information on workload identity, check out this documentation. If your application runs on another cloud provider or on-premises and you have access to environmental specific credentials, use Workload Identity Federation. For more information on Workload Identity Federation, check out this documentation. When there's no viable alternative, use service account keys. Use organization policy constraints to limit key usage and rotate the keys frequently. Now let's look at some best practices for managing service accounts. Follow a naming and documentation convention. For example, add a prefix and the name of the application to the service account email address that identifies its usage. Create single purpose service accounts. Manage the service account and the associated service as one unit and apply the same processes and lifecycle to them. If you have to use service account keys, rotate them often. The more often you rotate service account keys, the less likely it is that a leaked service account key is still valid when a bad actor finds it. Disable unused service accounts. To reduce the risk of a service account being abused by a bad actor, disable the service account not being used anymore. Disable unused service accounts before deleting them. To avoid inadvertently losing IAM bindings, it's best to disable the service account when it's not needed anymore and only delete it after a certain period has elapsed. For more information on best practices, authentication methods, and when to use service accounts, check out this documentation. Thanks for watching.